from in Hollywood. It's the b- 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 Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Uh, Easily 50 different listeners sent this article. And it was over the weekend, too, when many people don't even log on. You know, many people log on to the Internet from the office. Then they don't want to be on their computer after they get home. Or A lot of people have very uh, busy schedules on the weekend, having fun. Like we did. I went online this weekend. I was out having real fun. Anyway, uh, when this many people send the same article into the show, it doesn't even matter if it's something I'm interested in. If you're interested in it to that extent, that's the topic. And in this case, just the headline on it. I bet a lot of the people who sent this article in didn't even read it. They saw the headline and they said, this is a Tom Likas topic. It comes from the Yahoo Personals website. This is Yahoo's lackluster competitor to the ever more popular Match.com. And among the things they have on there are little dating tips. They have columns about dating tips. And what was sent to me is an article called, Are You Ready, Everybody? Do Girls... Really like dating jerks. And it is uh, in the form of she says, he says. She is Christine Hassler. Says here she is a life coach, whatever that is. I mean, she doesn't like showing up to an office, working nine to five like a, like a normal person. A speaker, same thing. And author of something called 20 something manifesto. A relationship expert. Then Yahoo Personals refers to this guy uh, in the piece, Jason Ryan Dorsey, as the Gen Y guy. Says here he's delivered 1,800 keynotes at conferences and corporations around the world. Why they chose these two people, I don't know. But here is the piece. Starts with, she says. Here's what she said. Do women like dating jerks? No, but we think we do. By the way, stop right there. It doesn't matter if you actually like dating jerks. All that matters is that you think you do, because then you will. My goal is not to make you like it. My goal is not to have you like me. My goal is to get what I want from you without giving you what you want. And then when you realize you're never going to get what you want from me to send you packing on your way so I can then hit up the next victim. Well, I've got it all figured out. Just ask the list of dissatisfied customers who walked away in disgust after they found out they couldn't stamp their little feet and get their way. Yes, she continues here. She says, as someone who dated a jerk whom I now refer to as my learning experience. Was that me? No, she doesn't look like my type. She says, I admit to falling under the jerk spell. Here's how the jerk spell works. 
We meet the jerk, and in some twisted way, we are seduced by his confidence, charm, and passion. That's me. That is me. We don't see these as the disguises they are. Confidence is really arrogance. All right. Charm comes from him being a player. Probably so. And his passion is being the center of his own universe. I'll even buy that. You say that like it's a bad thing. Says here, the jerk sniffs out our insecurities. See, what do I always tell you to do? Look for insecure women. Look for women with low self-esteem and then uh, capitalize on it. Mm. Maybe she's a listener. The jerk sniffs out our insecurities and uses them to reel us in with compliments that eventually turn into criticism. That's the part I don't agree with. It's backhanded compliments that were always criticisms you just didn't notice. Says here, and if we see a red flag like the time my learning experience told me his definition of a relationship was light, fun, and physical. We play mind games with ourselves. We use our normally rational inner voice to convince ourselves that we can tame him. <laughs> I love that women think that. Or that with the right kind of girlfriend, he will lose his jerk armor and transform into a leading man fit for a romantic comedy. Come on, ladies, what are we thinking? <laughs> I really don't disagree with much of what she's saying, except she doesn't realize the joke is on her. She says a jerk loves being a jerk way more than he loves us. Well, in my case, that is certainly true. She says, I guess if they've always gotten away with treating people poorly and nobody ever set them straight, why would they change? By the way, even if I didn't get away with treating someone poorly, or even if someone came to me and said, you know what, you're just a jerk, I wouldn't change anything, I'd say, yes, I am. You could set me straight all day long. Because it really doesn't matter if you've set me straight. The next victim doesn't know you. And you won't get to tell them what you know about me. So I'll be able to pull this off again and again and again. I've seen them come and I've seen them go. And once you're gone, someone else will come along and I will victimize them the same way. And I'll be proud of it. <laughs> Says here, besides, a jerk always seems to have an attractive woman on his arm laughing at his mediocre jokes. Hey, I resent that. I'm ignoring his wandering gaze. How? By the way, speaking of mediocre jokes, I, I, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I mean, I'd tell you my male, uh, my natural male enhancement joke, if only I could. I just can't tell that one on the radio. Or even off the air. <laughs> but nobody would call that a mediocre joke if they could hear it. I just, uh, it would not be worth my entire career to tell that joke on the air, so I'm not going to tell it to you. Yes, yeah, she says, besides a jerk, always seems to have an attractive woman on his arm laughing at his mediocre jokes. By the way, I've always got an attractive woman on my arm. That part is true. And she is laughing at my jokes, if she knows what's good for her. And ignoring his wandering gaze, how? I think it's because deep down every woman wants a challenge or a little danger. See, boys, this is what I tell you. She says, it's not really the jerk we like, it's the thrill of the chase, the rush of adrenaline when the jerk's phone number pops up on our cell, which is usually right after last call. <laughs> I can't say this woman is wrong. Most of what she says is exactly what I tell you boys all the time, and it only reinforces that what I'm telling you is true, and it works. She says, however, it's been my experience that jerked him. Is it some phase we can pull a guy out of? Guys only outgrow that phase when life no longer succumbs to their demands. And as a CN, I'm still getting away with it. Why would I stop now? Any woman who has dated a jerk for more than a week knows that it's a hollow relationship that ultimately leaves you disappointed, hurt, and commiserating with your friends. The only challenge worth overcoming when dating a jerk is not to let him affect or define your self-worth. So if there was a jerk out there making your heart go pitter-pat, who says that anymore? 
over the hill broads to write columns on, on, on the Internet. And estrogen is messing with your reasoning. Go ahead and let him woo you. But when he asks for your number, tell him that you only date guys who prove their value, she says, by respecting a woman. If he's a jerk, he'll roll his eyes, say you have an attitude and snicker as he leaves. If he sincerely accepts your ground rules, see, it's all about whether we're going to accept women's ground rules. And that's where I have a zero-tolerance policy. Nobody makes ground rules for me. You take me as I am or get lost. Couldn't care less. Yes, if he sincerely accepts your ground rules, the chances are you should give him at least one date to prove he's relationship material. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to do in the first place. Although you may not be spellbound at first, the nice guy without all the smooth answers may ultimately fulfill your needs in more meaningful ways. Yes, Poindexter, you probably will do that. Then we get to he says. This is the Gen Y guy. Who, who, who talks about Generation Y or Gen Y? I mean, does, does anybody refer to themselves as that? <laughs> How dated and, and, and stupid does that sound? He says, as much as I hate to say it, girls love jerks. At least until the jerk stops calling, which is usually right after he gets what he wants. Speaking from the guy's perspective, I've never quite understood what draws sane, attractive, bright women to guys who act like jerks. Maybe it is the thrill of the unexpected. Maybe it is trying to outplay him in his own game. Maybe it is hoping that deep down he is a nice guy and you're going to prove it to your naysayer friends. What I do know is that too many women who could easily be in a healthy relationship instead choose the cliffhanger ending instead of, date, oh, of dating a jerk. The cliffhanging end or ending of dating a jerk. That walks with a swagger, winks at anything that moves, and always has a one-liner at the ready. Truth be told, told, there aren't many nice guys who haven't considered acting like a jerk. <laughs> Here's what I tell you guys. Start acting like a jerk. Whatever you think is wrong, do that. Whatever you think uh, is the first uh, your first instinct, go against it. Whatever your mom told you to do, do the opposite. Yes, truth be told, he says, there aren't many nice guys who haven't considered acting like a jerk, especially when they steal your girl. Here, he says, I speak from experience. Sucker. However, daydreaming of jerkdom fades as soon as nice guys remember one thing. Being a jerk means acting like a jerk all the time. No, it doesn't. I'm not a jerk to my friends. I'm not a jerk to my brother or my nephew. It doesn't mean acting like a jerk all the time. It just means acting like a jerk all the time to chicks. It's all you have to do. He says that means causing the mental pain and emotional anguish that drives a girl to phone her friends, guy friends included, crying about what the jerk did to her in public on their first date. Yeah, that's true. And it pays to advertise, by the way. I hope she calls everybody and tells them what I did to her. The great thing about me for being a jerk is when a woman tells her friends what a jerk I am, it's like free advertising. Do you know how many more women I get after women tell everybody what a jerk I am? My God. It's like reading a commercial. Suddenly I'm getting a big response. I should just get an 800 number and be done with it. He says, even guys bear the brunt of girls who fall head over heels for jerks. Well, guys bear the brunt of it because those guys who are nice guys have to keep watching other guys getting laid while they aren't. Maybe that's you, Buster. Says here, if you're a girl who feels worse about yourself with every jerk you date, I hope you will make a big move towards respecting yourself and go on a date with a nice guy. Hardy, har, har. They may not offer the drama and constant criticism you've come to expect, but they also will try to hook up with you after dropping off their other girlfriend. <laughs> That's not a girlfriend, pal. If you were like me, you would know that. And if you are having trouble distinguishing between a jerk and a nice guy, here are three ways to tell. He says, one, he's probably a jerk if he tells you to skip. He didn't spell dessert properly. Skip desert. 
because your butt already jiggles enough. See, that's a backhanded compliment, I guess. That's not even a backhanded compliment. It's just a criticism. He's definitely a jerk if he guilts you into doing things that make you feel bad about yourself. Usually starting with the line, if you really cared about me. <laughs> I haven't used that one lately, but that's good. And three, he's absolutely a jerk if he takes you on a date and leaves you the bill while he leaves with the waitress. You know what? That's even better than just leaving a chick with the bill. <laughs> I like that. I mean, nothing in that article convinced me that I am wrong, that women go for the jerk and the nice guy gets left behind. It's true, isn't it? Tom. 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 Tom, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. This is my Sunday theory. It's delicious as soon as you get it. Leave it out in the sun for a few hours and see if you still want to eat it, because that's what happens to a hot chick over time, okay? It becomes a big mess, okay? It gets all over you. It's in your hair. It's a mess. It's on your clothes. And you don't know what to do about it anymore, you know? Just throw everything away. Just don't do it. Just break. If you have a girlfriend that you feel like you love her so much, Dump her. Dump her today. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm on 800 tom That is your telephone number. So I started with an article on the website called Yahoo Personals. It's called The Girls Really Like Dating Jerks. Nobody said they don't date jerks. One says they do like dating jerks. The other person says they think they like dating jerks. The bottom line is being a jerk is the way to go. That's how you get laid. That's how um, you get laid. Nicole on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Out of curiosity, does your mother listen to your radio station? Difficult to do because she died in 1998. So were you doing the same topic? So unless they are receiving the show at the cemetery, I don't think so. Okay, but prior to her passing, was she aware of your views on women? Yes. And was she proud of you? Oh, my mom was very proud of me and was my biggest fan, biggest supporter. Uh, she was always there for me, absolutely. Really? That's amazing. Well, I thought maybe that would explain some of your views on things if you if you had a bad relationship with your mother. I didn't. I, I had a great relationship with my mother. Well, that's great. Well, that makes sense then. But you see, most, most women in the United States are just a bunch of bitches uh, who could never measure up to my mother. Never. Mm. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. And I, no doubt you're one of them, right, dear? No, I don't refer to myself as that. Actually. Well, I know you don't refer to yourself as a bitch, but come on, in your tone of voice, it's pretty obvious. Oh, well, that's great that you feel that way. Can oh, I do. Your, no your doubt about it. Out. You're the kind yeah. of woman who caused guys like me to start taking action the way we are. You, know, you are really what we're sad. all trying to avoid. You know what's really sad is I actually looked at photos of you. And you're no, so no, again, this is what you're getting down to. It doesn't really matter. I don't care what you it look does. like or I look like. You're None right. of it matters because the bottom line exactly. here is, dear, but I can get hot, right. beautiful women who are younger and hotter I than you. At that. Well, highly you can doubt. highly doubt it all you like, but people who know me and who see me in public, they know it's true. Right. Yeah, right. Oh, I yes. You pull in some tens, let me tell you. Oh, I certainly do. You haven't seen any of them, but believe me, yeah. the people who see me out in public, people who see me at bars, people who see me at hockey games around town, they really know. You're getting defensive for someone that Yeah, I know. I know. That, that's the oldest trick of the book. Tell somebody they're really getting defensive. Their answer is, oh, no, I'm not. And they say, see that? You're getting defensive. I'm, the minute you start going there, you're out. Aging bitch. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Valerie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm I'm great. That's good. Um, I have a question about a guy that I've been dating, and I've been seeing him for about a month, and he refuses to sleep with me. And I have no idea what the deal is because he calls me all the time. He always wants to see me. He always wants to go on dates. Well, this brings up something very interesting. I have an ex-wife uh -huh. 
who used to love to brag about how she went out with guys and made them take her out to expensive restaurants and then never put out for them. Uh-huh. And she told me that the most effective line a guy ever used on her went uh-huh. like this. A guy met her and on the first date he said uh, that it doesn't matter what happens tonight, I'm not sleeping with you. Uh-huh. And th- this ex of mine who loved to brag about how many expensive restaurants she'd eaten at and how much money guys had spent on her without her ever putting out. She said to me, I'm I'm like, what's wrong with me? I'm saying to myself, what do you mean we're not going to sleep together? There's something wrong with me? She said that it almost worked, that she almost jumped into the sack with him merely because he said no. Yeah, that makes sense. No, that, I thought about that. Like, my, my brother told me to listen to your station because I was telling him, like, that kind of stuff that happens. But he but he won't even let me touch him. Like, the weirdest thing in the world. I mean, uh-huh. kiss, but then he's always like, okay, I got to go. And he leaves. He runs out. Well, he, he could be married. He could have a girlfriend. That would be my first guess. Okay. Uh, my second guess would be he's using a tactic on you to get you to uh, crave him. Because that does work. Yeah. <laughs> Another guess would be that he's gay. Huh. Okay, but why? Okay, that all those first two make sense, but why would a gay guy be trying to date a girl? Well, there there are that. a lot of gay men get married because that looks good to people, and uh, I've known gay men who've gotten married. Remember the governor of New Jersey? Yeah. Remember Jim McGreevy? Was that his name? He got married? Yeah. And got kids? And then he, yeah. you know, had to go to the bathroom a lot out on the turnpike. Weird. <laughs> All right. So uh, any of these is possible. But you see, uh, you're like the guys I talk to all the time. Why are you hell-bent on one person? Why don't you have four or five guys out there in the bullpen? Me? Why don't I? I do. <laughs> well, then why, don't worry about anyone that won't sleep with you. Where this guy's from, there'll be another one coming along, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's true. But I was just curious about that one thing. I know it's very effective. I have had women, and I've, all I have to do is tell them I don't have time to see them. There's no more effective line. You know, I'm busy. I'm flying out of town. I'm, I'm a busy radio personality. I've got appearances to make, and I have to schmooze clients and things like that. Yeah. So well, maybe I'm just too busy. And the more I'm too busy, the more ways they try to find creative ways uh, to come to my house at any oddball time and get in and get the job done. Hmm. When in reality, yeah. when yeah, in reality, half the time I'm actually at home. But uh, but if I say I'm too busy and I'm not there, they can't get enough. Hmm. So how long would you want to keep something like that going from your side? I would. You, you mean? Well, put it this way: uh, until it was convenient for me, or you were begging me for it. <laughs> Until it made, you made it seem like you had to have it and that I, you were not doing me any kind of favor. You have to remember, one of the worst things about being a guy is that women love to convince us that they're doing us some kind of a favor by having sex with us. That justifies us paying for all the drinks. That justifies us buying dinner. That justifies us picking you up and risking the DUI when we take you out and all that. It's because you are giving us that gift, your vagina. You're like lending it to us for an evening, and therefore we are supposed to like ladle on all the, the perks. Uh-huh. And, and so anytime a guy can get it turned around where you are the one begging him, that's, uh-huh. that's a plus. So this could just be some sort of technique of starting out the opposite way and then slowly transitioning. <laughs> well, then eventually you'd be like, okay, well, I'll have sex with you if you want to. Absolutely. You know. Uh-huh. And then, uh, <laughs> it, then he's doing you a favor. Uh, pretty see. soon you're making him dinner or you're buying him little things or pretty soon you're doing all the things you thought that he should have been doing for you. That's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's war out there, dear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you, Valerie. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm okay, Chris. Hey, I just wanted to say that to the woman who said you couldn't get girls, I have seen you in public. I met you at a, at a Kings game. Yeah. The woman you were with was stunning. 
Uh, this is what people, you know, they, these women love to call in and say, yeah, yeah, you just say that, but, but come on, I'm in public all the time. No, she was stunning, and you were a gentleman. Don't be telling people that. Oh, no. Well, it was certainly wonderful meeting you. Well, thank you for that, Chris. Okay, thanks, Tom. Have a great day. Appreciate the call. <laughs> Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. All women want to do is break your heart and break your wallet, so hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking about one of these pieces written for, in this case, the website of Yahoo Personals. Kind of the second fiddle to Match.com, I guess, of the online dating world. And uh, I am here to uh, tell you that uh, that this article that uh, talks about whether women like dating jerks. Actually, it asked if girls like dating jerks. Um, it, it doesn't dissuade uh, me from any of my arguments. In fact, it bolsters everything I say. That regardless of women believe what women say, they date jerks. And the trick for men is to be a jerk. Don't be the nice guy. Be the jerk. You want to get married? Be a nice guy. If you want to get laid, be a jerk. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Adriana, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, um, uh, my friend Renee, she, um, she suggested to listen to your station and I would, I just want to talk to you. I'm dating a jerk. Um, his name is Ryan and we've been going out for like three months, but he's like really mean to me. He didn't buy me anything or, and he doesn't like give me the, what I want and he doesn't like give me any affection or anything. It's like he doesn't even care about me. Perfect. Yeah, he doesn't care about me. And and look at the result. He's still your boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> so you see, uh, what I'm saying is true. So what is true? Yeah, he, he doesn't treat you the way you want to be treated. You think he's acting like a jerk, and yet you still call him your boyfriend. Because I'm still with him. Oh, there you go. So why should he do anything? He should, though, because he's my boyfriend. If he's my boyfriend, then you should get me something. What do you do for your girlfriend? Well, uh, certainly not buy them things. What the hell do you do for your girlfriend, huh, Tom? I don't have a girlfriend. I just get oh, laid. That's pretty. That's pretty obvious that you don't have a girlfriend. No, it doesn't mean I don't get laid, dear. It means I don't give anyone the keys to my house. I'm not obligated to do anything for anybody. No, well, I can already see why you don't get a girlfriend. Because I don't want one. Oh, you don't want one? Why? No. Because I'd rather just get laid. Okay. I'm going to tell all my friends not to listen to your show. Well, uh, t here's what I want you to tell them. Tell them what time it's on. You know what time it's on? 3 to 8 p.m. And tell and them it's on Monday through Friday. Why do I care? And tell well, they need to know what time not to tune in. And uh, in L.A., it's 97.1 KLSX of uh, SoCal's they FM talk that. station. Be sh be sh well, if they don't know, be sure because they might tune in by accident. And you want to make sure they know what time not to listen and what station not to tune into. Mm hmm Be sure to let them know not to tune in. Okay. And? Uh, uh, darling, you're like free advertising for me. Every time you tell your friends how bad I am, just like every time you tell uh, your friends that you uh, this particular guy's a jerk, uh, some of them are going to sleep with him. Okay. I don't even know why my friend was listening to your show. You don't know why you, why your friend is listening? Yes. Your friend is listening because this is the number one show in the afternoon. It's the number one show in the afternoon? Yeah. Listen. Listen here, fatty. Ooh. I listen to KISS FM. Really? Well, you're not listening to KISS FM now, are you? I actually am. You're listening to am. me. No, I'm actually You're listening, listening to me. my voice right now. Okay, that's nice it's to the Tom Likas Show, and here we are with Adriana, who's <laughs> listening to the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> and it's a kid FM, and my boyfriend treats me like... We know what the boyfriend listens to. <laughs> Keep it up, pal. Good work. She's a bitch. 
One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Larry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what up, Tom? First time, short time. What's going on? Not much, Larry. Oh man, I'm glad you got rid of her that was on the phone. That bitch. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, well, Tom, look, I just want, I want to say, you know, I'm listening to you. And my, one of my homeboys got me turned on to you one day. And I was like, okay, he's a cool little dude. I like that. You know, so I was saying, um, everybody knows, you know, the bad guy always wins. So playing a nice role is only for them pussies, basically. That's right. So, you know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. You know, I got a girlfriend. I'm on my way home. Just pick my girlfriend up right now, you know. But me and my girlfriend, we um we get along great. And that's just uh, one of the... One of them, one of my best friends, but, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't, I don't do everything she say. You know, I do everything my way. You know, what I says goes, but, you know, sometimes I let her have her way because, you know, that is girlfriend. You can dig that? Of course. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So, um, Tom, what's your advice? What, what kind of advice do you have to give to me? You know, being in a relationship, but still being a bad boy. You dig it? Yeah, well, the bottom line here is, look, if you if you sometime down the line end up in a relationship and you have to be a nice guy while you're in a relationship with somebody that you're serious about down the line when you're older and your career is together and you got money and you got your own thing, that's one thing. But when you're just trying to get laid, being a nice guy in any way, that reputation will kill you. It will kill you. Yeah, dig that, dig that. See, Tom, well, I'm going to go ahead and keep listening to you. You know what I'm saying? One of my goals for 2008 is to get rich. You know what I'm saying? I'm 25, so by the time I get 30, I hope to be, you know what I'm saying, laughing on my ass. You know what I'm saying? Just chill back. The more money you have, the more hot chicks you will get. Oh, man, Tom, I keep them hot. I ain't worried about that, baby. I know. I, I want to see you out in the streets one day. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm out there. A drink. All right, Larry, I'm out there. You'll see me. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to have a drink with you. All right, then, Tom. You keep it up, baby. All right, Larry. Church. Thank you. You. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Hank on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, first time, long time, man. How are you today? Do you care? Very much so, my man. Very much so. I'm doing great. All right, Tom. Um, I've been listening to your show for a while now. I'm 21 years old. I'm a college student over at UCLA. I live in Westwood, and my question for you is, how do I go about approaching a woman with the first line? I mean... You don't. Okay, you don't. You don't. Yeah. You go to bars, you go to clubs, you, you, you drink, and you your attitude is that you're there to have fun on your own. And yeah. you're not looking for anything. The minute you have to approach a woman with an opening line, you're at a, you're at a disadvantage. Okay. Okay. Yes, very true. Very true. You need to get her to beg for your attention. Mm -hmm. And the way to do it is to deny women the one thing they can't live without, and that is attention. Attention. Very true. Very true. I've heard you say that many a time. Okay. Now, I know your success. You know, you have fame, you have money, you have power. Now, me being a college student, I'm working on that, working my way to getting to that position. How do you approach a woman? Oh, obviously, you don't. I, actually, I don't. They just come to you. They you know? come to me, but the thing is, they don't just come to me because I have a radio show or because I'm the Tom Likas show. Because I meet many women just out and about when I am out and about. Mm -hmm. But it's the places I go. Mm -hmm. It's the lack of attention I pay. The lack of willingness to strike up a conversation or offer to buy a woman a drink or offer to buy her a bottle of champagne. These guys are losers who do this. They're losers. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have recently given up that practice buying a woman a drink because I, I I just turned 21 not not too long ago, so you know I'm getting into the clubbing scene, into the bar hopping scene, and I I I did take your advice on that, and I have noticed a difference very much so. Yeah. Wow. So that's the direction you need to take. Okay. Thank you so much, Tom. You're the greatest. I love what you do, man. I I hope you could do this for another 10 years, and you're the greatest. I I owe my future success to you. Could you do me a favor and take me out African tribal style with a shotgun and a thank you, Jesus? I certainly can. Thank you, Jesus.
1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is mm, Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom Likas, it is a pleasure to talk to you. I'm sure it is. You've been getting me laid commitment-free for countless times. Love it. I had a question for you, buddy. You know, you're a, you're a radio personality. Your name is out there. Everybody knows what you're all about. Does that hurt your game in the long run, knowing that what you say, girls know you're going to be running game on them? No, and I'm going to tell you why. That's a good question. And you would think that would be the case. But what saves me every time is that women think, that number one, women think that they are the exception to the rule. You hear them call in all the time. Well, not all women are like that, Tom. You know, I'm not like that. They all think they're the one who's not a bitch or they're the one who uh, I'm going to be a gentleman with or they're the one I'm going to spend $300 on dinner on. They always, I'm a big challenge. I've got a big target on my back. They're going to change you, so they think. That's number one, okay? And number two, uh, uh, <laughs> amazingly enough, they, they, all those women, the ones I tell you about, the ones who, uh, who buy fixer-uppers and stuff, oh, my God, they would just love. It, it would be like bagging big game. They would love to get me, and they all say to me the following. Here's what they all say. You're not like that guy on the radio. That's just an act. <laughs> this is the beauty part of what I do. <laughs> because women all say that, and they all believe that. They all try to think what they consider is the best of me. So here's what happens. I don't I don't argue with them. I, when they say, oh, you're just a teddy bear, fine. They, and then later on, after I don't call them or after I have sex with them and then uh, I couldn't care less anymore, then they say, well, wait a minute. You're acting like a real jerk. I'm like, Duh, I'm exactly as advertised. It's When they say to me, well, that's it, I'm never seeing you again. It's like, well, what, are you kidding me? There's going to be another chick along to replace you who will do the exact same thing. It's the perfect crime. Like, they think it's punishing me to say they won't see me again, when in reality, that's exactly what I want. What do I want, them clinging to me like human lint? No. I want them to go away. You want wham, bam, thank you, man. They get, the thing is, they think that they're punishing me or they're teaching me a lesson, when in reality, they're giving me exactly what I want. Tom, um, you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> it's like stealing. It's like stealing candy from a baby. And then, oh, it, yeah. by the way, the whole process repeats. Then I meet a woman who says, eh, I've heard all about you, and you think you're this big player and everything, but you're really just a big teddy bear. Okay, fine. Then they give me what I, what, what I want, and then they think I'm going to take them with me to Costa Rica or France or Italy or something, and then I don't. Go with the boys. You know, in fact, I will tell them, you know, well, I'm on my way now to, uh, to London. I'll see you. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh and, and they're like, well, do, do you need anybody with you? No, 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 I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't time. believe you would just go there and you wouldn't even invite me. Well, uh, come on, why, why would I invite you? Yeah, we had sex a couple of times. That was fine, but come on, this is London. I'm, I'm not taking sand to the beach. What, are you kidding me? <laughs> exactly. Amazing. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Here's Tracy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yo, what's Yo. up, Tom? I'm doing great. Man, I got a question for you, man. Check this out. I listen to your show all the time, right? Now, I got the whole concept down of not paying women no attention, right? Yeah. Okay, so I got her number. You know, we talked and everything. You know, the conversation went well. And by the end of the night, you know, I told her, I said, listen, you know, you can definitely come over, but if we go out, you know, I'm not buying you a drink. You know what I'm saying? And she got offended, you know? So I'm trying to figure out, okay, where do I take it from there? How do well, I, I never tell them in advance. I never show my hand. What's that? In other words, I don't show my hand. I, if I, if I, I would not tell a woman if we go out, I'm not buying you a drink. You don't ever say that? I just simply don't. And where do I take it from there? Well, again, it's kind of hard to repair a bad break job, you know? You might have to start fresh with somebody else. Good luck on that. The Tom Likas Show.